chartered in 1859, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe was among the first transcontinental railroads in North America. This transportation pioneer eventually linked Chicago and California with several key branches into Colorado. Reliable, all-season railroads open this barren land to hardy settlers. Its original main line via La Junta and Trinidad crossed Raton Pass into New Mexico at an altitude of 7,622 feet. Westbound trains tackled a steady 3.5% grade, featuring a tunnel at the summit of the entire railway. Although the Santa Fe's name was inspired by the future capital of New Mexico, unwelcoming terrain demanded the main line avoid this target. Persistence paid off, and an 18-mile branch was extended from the small town of Lamy. Steam left the scene by 1954, as colorful, super-cheap diesel locomotives whisked passengers across the system until Amtrak's 1971 debut. This safety-conscious carrier favored wigwag signals from the Magnetic Steel Company. Beginning in the 1920s, many crossings were protected by these wonderful warning devices that gradually disappeared during the last decades of the 20th century. Imposing upper quadrant semaphores survived into the BNSF era. In response to growing highway traffic incidents, 1972's yellow bonnet paint ensured higher grade crossing visibility. This locomotive makeover came complete with silver trucks. An ill-fated red, yellow, and black paint job, with SF on the sides marked a vetoed 1984 merger with Southern Pacific. Many units were dressed this way prematurely, as the Interstate Commerce Commission denied the application. The Kodachrome scheme for this aborted SPSF merger was ridiculed as, shouldn't paint so fast. In 1989, Santa Fe resurrected the popular war bonnet colors, dipping new locomotives in red and silver. This stunning retro paint suggestion of a return to glory was wishful thinking. Large-scale rationalization placed property under a microscope as the ripples of deregulation spread across the land during the summer of 1991. With no room for sentiment, management petitioned to abandon their namesake branch. The idea of no Santa Fe railway trains to Santa Fe seemed unthinkable. As developers eyed the valuable downtown depot and yards, 
city officials sponsored a red carpet event precisely 50 years after the Rio Grande's chili line disappeared from the rail map. We well, were just noticing on the side of the station that the Santa Fe had filed for abandonment of the branch. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, the railroad modernizing. Cutting back on lines that just aren't profitable? Yeah, and that, that uh, they're not using uh, frequent, selling them to other companies, uh, individuals, things like that. Is, uh, currently being talked about being sold by the railroad and if some private outfit took it over uh, you know there's always a chance it could be a dinner train or something but right now the Santa Fe business uh, is strictly a local and brings up things like uh, building supplies drywall lumber those kinds of things plus uh, a couple of beer cars a day uh, have you actually seen some trains come up here over the branch in the last, uh, well, in recent times? Oh, a few days ago. I saw the local. What's a typical consist of one of those as far as numbers of cars? It can range from uh, uh, three to maybe seven. And, uh, of course, it's a 10 mile an hour uh, track all the way from Santa Fe to Lamy. So you can almost walk alongside to photograph them through the bull rushes out here. It's a two hour ride. Just about. Just about. Local usually makes it from Santa Fe to Lamy in a little over an hour and a half. Would New Mexico's capital city become another trackless, trainless railroad ghost town? News of the abandonment petition spread like wildfire, inspiring Save the Railroad campaigns along the right of way. Yeah, give them a hand, the railroad. Give that train a hand, number 535. Hi, Sam Pick, the mayor of the city of Santa Fe, to hereby proclaim Friday, August 2nd to 4th, 1991, as Santa Fe Railway Weekend, for its exhibition tells the story of visions and visionaries and how their poetic view shaped the Southwest, and I signed it on behalf of our city council. And again, thank you very, very much for being here. David? like a scenario from a Hollywood movie. Television actor, rail enthusiast, and short line superhero Michael Gross saved the day. Despite its bumpy ride, Santa Fe Southern's troubled tracks remain in 2016. At its peak, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe measured more than 13,000 miles strong good enough for seventh place among America's railroads. To many, the colorful carrier's marketing campaigns were unsurpassed, creating larger-than-life images of a territory it served for 135 years.